recording. Uh, there are a lot of videos on how to tie an uh, improvised, uh, hasty Swiss seat, modified Swiss seat harness out there. Um, but having uh, done uh, kind of rescues in the mountains uh, a bunch of times uh, and trying to make harnesses with, with webbing, uh, this is one that I find that is kind of the best. It's not the fastest, um, but it does work really well. And you can tie this on yourself or somebody else. You tie it on somebody else, it's a little more difficult, um, but I'm just, going to, I'm just going to demonstrate how to do it on myself. Um, how much length of webbing do you need? I don't know, just the longest piece you can find. Uh, this is the midpoint of the webbing. I'm going to go like over here because I'm going to finish tying this off to, this, to one side or the other. So um, I've offset it. Uh, pin it where like your ventral ring would be. Um, and then I'm just going to grab one side and then the other. Um, and this looks very familiar with people who have tied uh, hasty harnesses before. Um, nothing here is that special. So I go around with this. Um, and one of the key points here is once I get this up, um, I want to make everything tighter than I think it needs to be um, and cinched up more than I think it needs to be. So if I'm doing this by myself, I just want to kind of squat down and then really kind of get this seated um, and tight as high as it'll go uh, before I continue. Because uh, these things inevitably do come loose and they loosen out over time. So uh, tighter the better. Okay, this should be like nothing new. This is pretty standard. Um, and what I'm going to do is wrap around. But the key points here when I wrap around, I don't want to wrap high. I want to keep all the webbing um, between like my, my hip and my iliac crest right there. Um, so I'm going to wrap around. Let's see. Yeah, one side, two sides there um, and this is the difference between a lot of the other harnesses you see out there and this one is um, I want to create a single attachment point here by by encapsulating this bridge um, and all that all I do is just when I come back around I just intertwine my strands through and I do the same thing with this side intertwine so I make one single point right there and I've got a lot of excess um, and so with this one, I'm going to finish tying my harness right here, but this one I'm going to keep going around to the other side. Um, minimum one time around, uh, but if you have more webbing, you can go two, three times. It's fine. Uh, this is a, the, one of the very few times where we actually do tie uh, uh, square knots. So, because in this application, square knots do a really good job of cinching down. Um, and I want to make sure it's a square knot, not a thief's knot or a granny knot. The tails are both exiting out parallel to the, so these strands and these strands are both in parallel. So that's a square knot, but I always back up uh, square knots with safeties. And an overhand knot is inherently weak safety knot, but, but for webbing, it probably works okay. This one's a, I'm going to do a double. So this is basically your barrel knot right here. And again, safety knots, I want to get them as far up against that main knot as possible. And then here as well. So here I'm just going to do a single one just because I have a lot of webbing and I don't want to waste time uh, recording this, trying to, but you get the point, right? All the excess I can put in my pocket. I don't need it. And then we'll recap what we've got here. Okay, so if you look, super tight everything is at the iliac crest or below in this little gap here i have one single attachment point this is going to prevent inadvertently uh missing uh a section if i go in and attach uh, whether you tie in or whether you clip in and rescue we usually clip in with the terminal end of a knot and we're good to go um this is actually the most comfortable it resists uh kind of loosening up um over time and we can incorporate a, uh, a chest harness to this as well. I'll, I'm going to incorporate a Parisian Baudrillard style chest harness. And all it is is a sling. And again, how much webbing do you need? I don't know. Just grab the longest piece you can find um, and tie it in a loop. And I'm going to pinpoint or just try to keep that knot over the back of my shoulder. It doesn't matter which shoulder, doesn't matter which shoulder I use. I just want to keep it there. And I don't have to keep anything super tight right now, but I want to get all this extra stuff around the opposite side of me. Um, but I want to tie this in a way that uh, it's not going to choke. 
uh, like a girth hitch and it's not gonna loosen up either. Um, and we do that with a sheet bend. And right now I'm not worried about keeping anything super tight right now because I want to be able to tie the sheet bend. So let me back out. So I'm gonna treat this bite here as just a tail and I'm gonna treat the loop that was over my shoulder. I'm gonna fold this in and, and this is where like, you know, when you tie a sheet bend, you tie two ropes of an unequal diameter together or whatever. But, but this is my bite right here. I'm gonna put my thumb in as a, a reference or a landmark and I'm gonna turn so that like, you can see it as if you were me tying it. And I'm gonna treat this bite here as if it were the tail. So uh, when I do my sheet bend, I come up, I wrap over my thumb. I wanna get all this out. And I come around and I feed that tail through that thumb on my reference point right in there. And it's a little messy, um, but the important part is that I, I have it tied. And now, I can get me back up here. And now this is all loose. Uh, now I want to size it. Um, so I want this to ride high under my armpits and I want it to be as tight as possible. So now that I have the knot, I can start to cinch everything in and really tighten this up. Uh, the flatter I can get everything, the better, but it's not super critical. So I, I really want to choke this up as much as I can, get that knot tight. Okay, so we're set. So this is not going to slip anywhere. Um, and what I can do with this now is... I have my primary connection point to my seat harness. Um, this is not a full body harness. This is not an improvised full body harness by any means. Um, I want some kind of support um, and I can do that uh, by just incorporating a carabiner and clipping in. Um, where I clip in, um, well, there's three options. I can clip in here, here, or here. I don't want to clip in here because this can ride up. Uh, instead, I can go side to side. It doesn't matter where exactly you, you put it. So I'm just going to go right here. And then when I, I'm actually in my harness, this provides some kind of support to keep me upright. Um, granted, it's not a fall arrest point because this chest harness is not integrated. So if I put like just a separate uh, care or prusik on a backup line and then this fails and I fall, this is not a fall. This is not okay. <laughs> this is just for support. Um, in the field, you could probably improvise a full body harness, but if you have to go, but if you're at that point where you need a full body harness in the field, you're probably in the back country. And if you're in the urban setting, you've probably screwed up. Um, so I had this long tail of a bite here and I can just do whatever I want. Like just encapsulate the seat harness, however, however way you want to do this. Um, and you can tie this off with whatever is appropriate. You can just do like a figure eight or whatever or overhand cinch it down. But when you do cinch it down, like hunch your back over so that like it's really tight when you're actually suspended. Um, so here I can do whatever. Don't know which knot, tie a lot. So I'm hunched over. And I'll just keep going. This isn't super important. And right now I'm not even thinking about what knot I'm tying. I'm just tying a lot. But you get the idea. You could do like figure eights, follow throughs, whatever. Um, and so now when I tie this hunched over and I sit back up, now I could probably just clip in right here or even right here as a backup. And if my main attachment point failed, let's get this character out of the way. And let's assume that I was already on like another line. And if this is my backup line or my fall arrest mechanism and I fall, and now I get weighted. Well, yeah, it, it's pulling on my, my chest harness, but it's connected to my seat harness. So really, it's all connected. It's not completely on my chest. So this is a safer option if you want to improvise a full body harness in the field. I don't know when you'd ever do that in the industrial setting, but these are options. Uh, so uh, improvised, modified, hasty Swiss seat harness with the Parisian Baudrillard chest harness adaptation.